Today, we're going to be going over some routes that all wide receivers need to learn. So the first route that we're going to be going over is something called a comeback and go route. And that's pretty much exactly how it sounds. You're going to be faking a comeback and then pushing up vertical, but we're going to go over the exact steps and the exact way to run this specific route. So this wide receiver takes this outside release on this DB, breaks into the comeback route, puts one foot in the ground, and then pushes up vertical and wins on this go route. Now, I know what a lot of you are probably thinking is that this route takes an insanely amount of time, right? It's a little bit longer developing route. It's not like a quick out and up. It's not like a quick slant and go. Like you have to run a full comeback and then go. Now you see a lot of NFL teams work this route and they'll work it against man coverage. And usually when they do this is when they're in a max protection situation, right? There's different types of protection for a quarterback. Usually a quarterback has like a five man protection, right? You got the left tackle, you got the guard, you got the center, you got the right guard and the right tackle. That's five man protection. And then maybe you have six man protection where a running back stays in the block, or maybe you add a tight end. Then you have some type of max protection situation where maybe you have two tight ends and you have seven people blocking for the quarterback so he has a little bit more time and this wide receiver is maybe singled up on the outside so this route can absolutely be used in a real game scenario let's just break down the steps so obviously when we take this outside release we want to make it look exactly like our comeback now in a perfect world we would love to drop on the inside foot on my comeback route now because it's press man coverage you guys it's not necessarily it's hard to determine what foot i'm going to break on the last thing i want you guys to do is when you have press man to man coverage and because you're running a route where you got to drop your hips you're so concerned with dropping on your inside foot on a comeback that you take a bunch of choppy steps just to drop on the inside foot, you have to attack the depth of the route. So if you drop on the outside foot, that's totally fine. But in a perfect world, we'd love to drop on the inside foot because that eliminates one extra step. So he drops into this break. So that's something we call the trigger step. And that is what ultimately drops your hips and decelerates you. And now I know you're pushing back up vertical, but we have to be able to decelerate to sell the actual comeback route. So when we get to that inside step, that trigger step, we got to drop my weight where I tell wide receivers to get is a parallel position. Like you guys are doing squats in a squat rack and you're only going down 50% to parallel. That's where we ultimately want to be because that's low enough to stop, but also high enough to where your feet will be able to stay moving. A lot of receivers drop way too low. It's almost like their butt goes to their heels and you can't move your feet like that, you guys. So we get to 90 degrees. So you want to snap with the first foot, which is the inside foot. Now your second and third step is what's going to sell the movement because that's what's going to sell your hips flipping out on this comeback break. So your second step has to pivot almost at a 40 45 degree angle because now your third step is going to hook around and when that third step plants you are pushing off of the third into the fourth step and again your hips should already be down that angle your body should be down that angle and that's what gets that db to bite and then we can accelerate back up field now you see how he's in obviously the red zone so he looks back for the ball right away but guys if we're doing this route like on the middle of the field you got to make sure you keep your head down right here so we don't let that db recover when you're running with your head tilted back to the quarterback and you have a lot of space and that quarterback's going to lead us makes it tougher to catch up to the ball but it also allows that db to recover because you know he's got his head down and he is trying to catch back up to us so that's that comeback and go route right there. You guys, I'm going to play at full speed one more time. Great job of this receiver dropping his hips, pivoting, hooking, and selling that comeback route for one more step, okay? So now, next route we're going to be going over here is going to be something called a fake jerk route. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen a whip route before. A jerk route is where you guys go into a whip, take one step back, and then break back up to the inside. Now, this is going to be a fake of that. But before we break this down, you guys, if you are a wide receiver and you guys would like a daily workout schedule that you can do to learn some of the things that we have discussed in this video, some of the techniques that we've discussed in this video so far, check out that very first link in the description below for our elite wide receiver training package. What you could get access to is eight weeks of daily on-field workouts for wide receivers and gym workouts for wide receivers. We break it down in a schedule, like a literal schedule, guys. Monday this, Tuesday that, Wednesday that. We talk about the exact sets and reps to follow, and we give you a video example of each drill and exercise. Plus, we also include a bonus four-week speed development plan that'll help you guys get faster because speed is so important at the receiver position. So guys, check out our elite wide receiver training package. Very first link in the description below. Again, very first link in that description below. Let's get to this fake jerk route. So now, on this route here, you guys, so we come up, breaks that he's going to whip, drops, hits a one-two, and gets a ton of separation on this DB. Now, you guys may not have this route in your playbook, but I guarantee what's something you slot receivers may have, or you running backs even watching this, is like a choice route. So this could be something you do on like a choice route, or a route where it's just like, hey, just go get open type situation. So let's talk about it, right? This is, the, that's the name for it is like a fake jerk route, but you could just think of this as almost like an option route in a sense. So what he does is he breaks to the slant, right? So he breaks off of one foot. We're trying to make this DB think that we are running a whip route. So it's one, two, breaks on, hooks the outside foot around. Now a jerk route, you guys, is where we put one foot on the brakes, 
with the, like my left foot in this case, and then you break back up to the inside, trying to get this DB to sit outside, try to sell like we're doing a whip. Now, what this wide receiver does is essentially a one-two. So he puts the brakes on like he is ultimate whip route. So he puts the brakes on like he's running a whip route. One-two. Gets that DB to jump on the jerk route, and now he's got separation over the middle. So this is a route that we have hardly really ever talked about on this channel. But again, guys, you could use this as an option route. You could use this as a choice route situation. So I'm going to show this more time, and then we will get into another route that you guys must learn as wide receivers. That's a great example of a fake jerk route. Okay, so now this next route is going to be called a tempo change dig. So I've gone over like a stutter dig before. I've gone over like, you know, like a hesitation dig, like a peek back dig dig, all those kinds of things, but this is a tempo change dig with something called a pressure step, okay, which essentially means like you're just applying more pressure into the ground, and that slows down your tempo, so let's talk about it, right, you guys, so what this receiver does, takes an outside release, pressure step, bursts up vertical, and then drops his hip and is able to win on the dig, so guys, let's talk about scenarios real quick, so if you have to run a 10 to 12 yard dig, and you have a DB who's lined up inside shade press, right, we know that that DB's inside shade four a reason, especially us lining up on the top of the numbers. We can't just try to get to the inside of this DB because he's going to get hands and he is going to keep his leverage. Anytime that a DB has a leverage, he is taught to keep that leverage. So if I end up running my dig and I'm all the way over here by this coach in the white shirt, it's probably not a good thing, you guys. Probably not going to impress any college coaches in this type of camp environment. But also, it's it's not realistic. In a real game, you're not going to be able to run that dig over there because you have other receivers and other defenders over there. So you're going to have to take what the DB gives you, which is an outside release. Now, our goal when we take this outside release is obviously I want to get to here and I want this DB to open up the gate. I want his hips to flip to the opposite end zone, think that we were running deep, and then we put the brakes on and slip under him. Now, obviously, with my release, if I could stack him, which gets means get this DB trailing behind us and trailing my back hips, then great. I can give him a move at the top and get separation. But if I can't do that, my goal is to get him to open up his hips and then I drop my hips and slip under him. So what do I have to do to get him to open up his hips? I have to sell vertical. So I have to run with long strides. I got to run with good speed. I got to have good body language. The frequency of all three of those things, speed, body language, stride is what's going to make that DB open up. However, against a talented DB, I think you need a little bit more than that. I think you need to make this outside release dig look more like how you would actually run your fade route. So maybe one time on a fade route, you did this same type of release to this little split release, and then you gave him like a little hesitation. You gave him that little pressure step where you just step hard, almost like you're dropping your weight a little bit and slow him down and then you reaccelerate to the outside and he's thinking, oh shit, I don't want to get beat on a fade again, or I don't want to get beat on this fade because why would he give me a slow pace inside kind of fake and then run something back to the inside? So that gets him to overcommit a little bit more to that fade ball. And then we could put the brakes on, drop my hips and slip underneath them. So guys, it's more than just running hard. It's more than just selling vertical with your speed. You also got to sell it with kind of like, I guess you could say like concepts in a sense. Like for example, like let's say you ran, like this is like the reverse of it. Let's say you had to run a slant, right? And let's say you did this little split release right here that Miles does. So he splits his feet where his back foot comes up, his front foot goes out, both feet come to balance. And then he goes and runs a fade. Now let's say you got to run a slant. You do the same split release and then you take three hard steps to the outside. Maybe he thinks, oh, I've seen this before. And then we slip under him. You have to pair your moves together. It's not just about doing one route one way and another route another way. You have to make them look similar. So he comes off, he gives this little pressure tip pressure step, tempo change to make it look more like a fade, make this DB start to get in his head a little bit like, well, why would he slow down if he was going to push up inside? He's slowing down to probably go vertical. Subconsciously, they feel that way. And that subconscious feeling is what leads to separation by me. So guys, I'm going to play this again full speed one more time. Great router from Miles McAfee using that tempo change pressure step to get separation on that dig versus inside shade press.